Hi guys, the title of this video wasn't meant to shock you into watching it, but yes, I do have a hole in my heart and a trip to the cardiologist this week proved as much. So how did I get here? Well, if you've been watching the channel for the last few weeks, you'll know that I had a health scare a couple of weeks ago where I suffered some short-term memory loss, was taken by ambulance to the emergency department at the hospital where I had a series of tests and the early diagnosis was that I had suffered a TIA, which is a transient ischemic attack or amnesia, or a term for a mini stroke. Now there was nothing conclusive that night, and I had an MRI a couple of days later on the old noggin to make sure that there was no compromise to the brain, that all came back clear. And the trip to the cardiologist was really more about peace of mind for myself and also for Trish to make sure that the heart hadn't been the cause of that sudden memory loss and also to make sure that the heart's healthy enough to allow me to keep running uh, the amount that I have been doing. So the appointment with the cardiologist involved an ultrasound and it involved a bubble test. Now the ultrasound came back fine, but the bubble test showed the hole in the heart. Now the bubble test involved a cannula being placed in my arm, blood drawn, that blood mixed with a sterilized saline solution and the cardiologist mixed that together with two syringes, basically squirting the liquid from side to side. Now that was then injected back into me, and while that was happening, the ultrasound was filming to see how that liquid would react when it reached my heart. And what it did reveal was that there was a leakage from the right side of my heart through the wall to the left side. Now, probably make a meal of this, but the way the blood circulation was described to me by the cardiologist is that blue blood, arrives through the right side of the heart. It's transported up into the lungs where it is filtered and comes out as red blood into the left side of the heart and then is transported to the brain and the rest of the body. That's normal for me as well, but the danger is that if I was to happen to get a clot, and if that clot was to travel into the right side of my heart and not through the lungs, but through the hole into the left side of the heart, then that clot would then be transported throughout the body and could be lodged in the brain, which could cause a stroke. That's the dangers. The cardiologist pretty much guaranteed me that the hole wasn't the reason for the sudden memory loss. This is something that I've had since birth. Not something to be too concerned about, but definitely something to be mindful of. He did suggest pretty strongly that I don't scuba dive or even attempt to climb Mount Everest. For the obvious dangers being uh, the possibility of the bends with scuba diving and also the possibility of altitude sickness with climbing Mount Everest. Probably two activities that I've never considered. So it was a bit of a shock to be told after 54 years that you got a hole in your heart. Definitely just something to be pretty wary of going forward. Cardiologist did tell me that the amount of running I do will have no compromise on the heart. So that's pretty much everything ticked off health-wise now. Uh, the cardiologist did give me a referral to see the neurologist. Uh, that'll be the last specialist that I have to see just to make sure that everything's going on okay up in here. Probably sounds worse than it is when you say you've got a hole in your heart but pretty much the feedback that I got from the cardiologist was be mindful of it, but just carry on life as normal. So that's what I plan to do. All right, that's enough talk about health. Uh, let's get back to some running. Now that I'm allowed to drive again after that two weeks uh, since that health scare, I'm heading down to the Esplanade. I'm going to do a 6K tempo tonight at half marathon pace. Plan is to do a 6K warm up and then straight into that 6K tempo and then a 3k cool down so it'll give me 15k for the night try and do a little bit of filming along the way Five. Way too quick. Let's ease it back a little bit. Three kilometers. Another 358. Feeling okay. Breathing's a little bit heavy. 
4K. Number 358. Get a track at that Three fifty six. Actually, not sure if that last K worked. So it was six K was three fifty seven. Walk for 30 seconds for recovery and then straight into the cool down. Now, a couple of k in the cool down already, but I think I might have had the GoPro on time lapse, so we'll see. Oh, that's the cool down done. 15k right on the dot. 66 minutes, 425 average with that tempo in there. Really sort of struggled in that tempo. I just uh, couldn't really find any sort of comfort. So at that tempo, the aim was to run four minute kilometers, roughly half marathon pace. I think that's about 6.20ish a mile. Uh, ended up with about a 3.58 average for that tempo, but just didn't feel comfortable. Uh, really felt like I was struggling for any sort of rhythm throughout. And even though I was able to maintain that pace it just I really felt like I was heel striking and that's just a classic symptom of overstriding and that probably explains why I was really searching for that rhythm I was working to maintain that pace but with no rhythm I was overstriding form just really went out the window on that tempo so I don't know why like maybe those four days that I had off a couple of weeks ago with that health scare of uh, just taking the edge off me a little bit fitness wise but that's okay, I'm still really happy with that. Just a bit disappointed that the form wasn't real good. But I can work on that and uh, keep moving forward. So I had a question from a viewer uh, concerning the last video, asking why I was splitting my uh, preparation for the Gold Coast 50 into two eight week blocks. Well, the simple answer to that was that I just feel that a 16 week block of training is just way too long. Uh, really hard to keep things motivated for that period of time so it was just best I thought to break it up into two eight-week lots uh, just makes it easier too to uh, structure the training that way and it also keeps my options open for this eight, this first eight-week block where you know if I want to do a time trial at the end of it I can or uh, there are a couple of races uh, on in Queensland around that time so you know just keep my options open if I want to do that uh, time trial or a race I can if not I'll just go straight into that second eight-week block uh, with that race focused training uh, preparing for the Gold Coast 50 in December so I hope that answers your question over 22k rolling over some decent hills this morning thought that my legs might have been a little bit more weary after last night's tempo run but overall they were pretty good overall a good solid hit out for a midweek long run about a 502 average uh, per kilometer 
uh, which isn't too bad considering that I did make a few stops for filming. Yeah, so the heart rate was pretty good, kept it reasonably low. I uh, did spike on the hills, which was to be expected, but I'm okay with that. Uh, I'll put the heart rate average up on the screen so you can see what it was. So guys, that's a wrap for this video. Uh, stay safe out there, happy running, and I'll catch you in the next video. Hooroo.